So what Madison does is though is that my iPad only has 1% on there. So it's probably going to die. Amen. But Madison, if I gave you my iPad and it was dead, what would you do? You would do what? You would give it back to me? And if I needed the iPad to work, what do you think I would do? Charge. So if I have a dead iPad but I don't have any electricity, can I use the iPad? No. So any electronic device that does not have a battery is ineffective when disconnected from it. It's power supply, microwaves, crock pots, cured coffee machines, computers, all of these items, they're all ineffective when unplugged from its power supply. If I put a bowl of soup in an unplugged microwave, what do you think is going to happen? And so it's impossible for any electronic device to properly or effectively serve its purpose if it's not connected to the power that it needs. So I want to talk a little bit about the anointing. To anoint means to simply smear or rough oil or perfume. So the act of anointing is significant of consecration and setting aside to a holy or sacred use. Hence the anointing of the high priest or prophets or kings. Whenever the Lord wants to use somebody, he anoints them. And so when a king is anointed, it is equivalent to him being crowned. And so this is what I want you to understand this morning about the anointing. Wherever there's an anointing, understand that there will be an assignment. Amen. The anointing is, the, is to, to, to the assignment as electricity is to an electronic device. The anointing to the assignment is what electricity is to an electronic device. And so if I do not have the anointing, it makes my assignment ineffective. Come on. And so there's, there's the anointing on one's life that makes one effective in a fulfilling the assignment. David, he isn't just anointed, but he's anointed for an assignment. Yes. Yes. The anointing and the assignment will always go hand in hand, though they may not always show up on the scene at the same time. Surely wherever there is an anointed vessel, there is an assignment waiting to be fulfilled. And wherever you see a task or an assignment, surely there is a vessel or an individual somewhere being prepared to receive the anointing for the assignment. Tell somebody, I'm not just anointed for no reason. Amen. Come on, tell them, tell them, I'm not just anointed for no reason. Tell them, I know I look good, but I'm anointed for a reason. There's an assignment somewhere waiting to be fulfilled. And so when we look at our text, Samuel has been given instructions by God to go to Bethlehem because amongst Jesse's sons, one will be anointed as king. Yes. God now has rejected Saul as king and has given Samuel, the prophet, the responsibility of anointing a new king. Disobedience has just cost Saul his position on the throne. It may not look like much right now. And it may not catch up to you right away. But disobedience will always cost you something. And so to every action, there is a reaction. And to every action, whether good or bad, there will always be consequences. And so while Saul is out being disobedient, doing his own thing, David is being considered for the assignment. Yes. And so don't ever think for one second that you're so good at what you do that you're irreplaceable. You might be the best dancer on the team, but you better remain humble and thankful. You might be the best drummer on the drum line, but you better remain humble and thankful. You might be the best point guard in the city, but you better remain humble and thankful. You might be the fastest on the football field, but you better remain humble and and thankful. Yeah, man, and so just because the position is yours today, it doesn't mean it'll be yours tomorrow. And so while Saul was
was out here partially obeying God, God was sending another one out to be king. Don't you know that partial obedience is still disobedience? And so I don't know who this is for this morning, but I hear the Lord say, you better follow my instructions to the text. The Bible says in James 4, 17, therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him is sin. Now, I'm nosy, so I had to go to the chapter before because I was like, well, what's all you? <laughs> you know how we are. What happened? What happened? So I was like, let me see what happened in the chapter before. Saul was given specific instructions to completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. God said destroy the men, the women, the children, the babies, the cattle, the sheep, the goats, the cattle. He said destroy all of them. Saul, Saul knew per the instructions what he was supposed to do. But he takes it upon himself to spare Agax, like the king of the Amalekites. And he kept the best of the sheep, the goats, and the cattle. The fact, anything that Saul thought looked good to him, he kept. And so he only destroyed what was worthless or a poor quality. And so now when Samuel catches up to, to Saul finally, Saul had a nerve to be excited to see Samuel. He come up to Samuel, skip me. I did what the Lord told me to do. <laughs> and so the Lord was disappointed. He said, I regret even making Saul king. Tell somebody, it just got So he says to say, but I carry out the Lord's command. And so hear me today, obedience will get you promoted. But partial obedience will get you demoted. Yeah. So young people understand that obedience puts you in a position to be blessed. I'm gonna tell you how we parents work. Have your parents ever asked you to do something or tell you to do something and then you don't do it? And then they be like, see, I was gonna take you to McDonald's, but you ain't clean your room. That's true, that's true. I'm going to be honest because I'm, I'll be hoping my kids don't do what I ask them. to <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go out. I'm like, who is this? I'm like, who is this? See, that guy didn't know it was a reward on the table. Right? Be at home. Oh, I was going to take you to GameStop, but you still ain't get started on your homework. I told you ain't get started with the food. It was cold outside. I don't feel like it. But I want you to understand there's always a reward on the table. And so when the Lord gives us instructions, right, we don't know what's down the line, right? But the Lord be like, I was about to give you the promotion, but you still cussing folk out on the job. But you still late and That's what happened to Saul. Saul missed out on the blessing because he decided to crush the obey. So the prophet. The same prophet who anointed Saul is the same prophet that now has to anoint David. Tell somebody it's not Christian. And so when Samuel gets to Bethlehem, he invites Jesse and his seven sons to partake in his sacrifice. Now Samuel being a man of human life like us. He begins to judge Jesse's sons. And he assumes that because these are tall, good looking young men, that surely the Lord must have chosen one of them 
And so the Lord says to Samuel, you look at how they look on the outside. But I look at what I see on the inside. And so from this day forward, don't ever stand in a room and compare yourself to anybody else because of how they look. They may have the skills, but God has given you the passion. They may have the ability, but God has given you young people the creativity. They may have the gifts, but God has given you the anointing. Amen. So the next time you walk in a room for tryouts, hold your head up and say, they might be good, but the Lord is with me. The next time you have to do a presentation in front of the class, say, I might be nervous, but I know that the, the Lord is with me. The next time you have to walk into an office to apply for your first job, even though you know other people may have applied for the same position, you better walk knowing that the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. He sets me apart because he's with me. Amen. And so Luke 4, 18 declares, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. And so David, although he was the youngest baby boy, he had one thing working for him. The Lord was with him. And so the Bible says that God rejects all seven of Jesse's sons. And Samuel then says to Jesse, are these all your sons? And Jesse replies, they're still the youngest. But he's out in the fields watching over the sheep. And so the Bible says, nobody can sit down to eat. Until David shows up. Right. He is the youngest of all of his brothers. But yet they have to wait on his arrival in order to eat. He is what the Lord wanted. This is what the Lord wanted me to tell you this morning, young people. Some folk won't be able to eat until you accept the anointing on your life. For some, the God in you. It's getting ready to be the only God that they will ever see. Amen. For some of you, your prayers is getting ready to be the only divine intervention that they experience. For some of you, you may be the only light that brings hope to dark situations. There will be people at school waiting for you to show up so that they can eat and feast off of your anointing. There will be people in your family waiting for you to show up so that they can eat off of your prayer life. Yeah. There will be people in your circle waiting on you to show up so that they can eat off of your prayer. There will be people in your life waiting for you to show up so they can eat off of your faith. I dare you to tell somebody, excuse me while I get to the house. There's people waiting on me to eat. I have time to play in this season. I have people that are waiting on me to eat. I have people that are waiting on me to eat. I don't have time to club and drink in this season. There are a people that's waiting on me to eat. Aisha, don't you know that your husband was waiting on you to eat? Aisha, don't you know that your father was waiting on you to eat? And so the anointing that you carry may be the only anointing that people in your family experience. Everybody in your house might not be saved. Everybody in your family may not be saved. believe that he was between anywhere from 10 to 15. Oh 
right. Now, I said earlier that the assignment and the anointing go hand in hand, but they may not always show up at the same time. Well, David is anointed to be king, but he does not rule as king until he's about 30 years old. Wow. But he was still anointed for that assignment. Yes. But on the way to the assignment, he was learning something. Yeah. The Lord found David watching over the flock. Pastor is a shepherd that watches over the flock. And so if you be faithful in the little things, God said, if I can trust you amongst the sheep and the goat, surely I can call you to reign over nations. Amen. So David has to come inside to receive the anointing for the assignment. And so for many of you in the room this morning, you may be the only person in your house, in your family, on your job. Don't you know people can't eat until you show up? My God. Don't you know you bring hope to people's situations? But you gotta receive the anointing that the Lord has for you. How do I receive it? First you gotta posture your heart. David's heart was in the right place. Yeah. You got to be in a position where you just desire to see good of people. Amen. Amen. More importantly than that, you want to see folks saved. Yeah. Amen. Yes. 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 Let me tell you something. I burnt my neck before with a flat iron. Yes. I said I ain't going to be able to do it in hell. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not. You ever burned yourself? Yeah. This is just like, oh, so like uh, imagine that not ending. I, I, I ain't gonna be able to do it. I ain't gonna be able to do it. <laughs> There's nothing out there that I want so bad that I'm gonna. Like, oh, no, no. Y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. Amen. Yeah, I ain't gonna be able to do it. I ain't gonna be able to do it. I can barely sit under the, the flat arm when I'm. No, 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 no. And so understand. I'm finished. People are waiting. Don't stand up. Sometimes the Lord blesses us. Adults. Not because we deserve it, but because we honor your yeah. Yeah. Can I tell y'all something? In the, the three years that I've been married, I had to live off of my daughter's praise. Yeah. There were Sundays that Mel was standing in the corner and yeah. she would dance and she would shout. Yeah. I had to eat off of it. When my sons come up here and they dance and they shout, I had to eat them. Sometimes it wasn't until they showed up that, that, that broke something in the house, the atmosphere, you would just begin to hear laughter. And so don't you ever think that what you have is insignificant. Your teachers are waiting for you to show up in the classroom so that they can eat off of the joy that you bring to their lives. Can I tell y'all something? As you walk the hallways, y'all make a difference. You change the atmosphere in the building. People are eating off of you. Your life, your relationship with God, your prayer life. You coming in here and making a joyful people out there And some may never come back to say thank you, but that is okay. Amen. But understand that because you are young, it does not matter. David was the youngest of eight. And the Lord said, this is the one. 
So I stand before you this morning on this Sunday saying, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Hallelujah. And people are waiting. So I want the young people to come. I'm going to do two separate altar calls. I understand that adults might want prayer, but this is about being with Amen. Amen. So we're just going to ask the young people to come. We're just going to just ask the Lord to seal the anointing that's already in there. After the young people have come, adults, if you want to come, and get prayer, I invite you. I was very encouraged by this word myself. I enjoyed studying for it. 